If one grew up in the 1980s, it was hard to miss multiple showings of the Beastmaster on cable television. Both HBO and the Turner Networks, for example, played it routinely, if not incessantly, but it was these cable TV replays that garnered the Beastmaster a growing appreciation and cult following, as the 1982 Don Coscarelli directed and co-written film is a good, fun, endearing one. Hey everyone, this is Jan Mann, and these are five reasons why the Beastmaster is awesome. The movie is centered around Dar, played by Mark Singer, who has the ability to communicate with animals via telepathy. Not only that, but he forms connections and lifelong bonds with them, all while they assist each other in battle and in life. This relationship they share is an endearing one, particularly to any child who grew up on both the movie and loving or having an affection for animals. Moreover, Dar also has the unique ability and talent to wield a sword, along with being gifted the caper, a weapon that operates like a bladed deadly boomerang. He also meets, befriends, travels, and fights with other likable human characters, such as the young Tall and his mentor Seth, both of whom are extra handy and skilled at fighting with a staff, and the slave girl Kiri, whom Dar ultimately has a playful and romantic relationship with, and was likely the source of envy for many young male repeat viewers growing up. Though in the end, despite Dar's abilities and adventures, he is a bit of a tragic hero since his life was nearly taken as an unborn and his mother, adopted father, actual father, and entire village were killed by the evil high priest Mayax. Dar is left with nothing but his abilities, which makes him not just a tragic hero in that regard, but also a strong yet empathetic man for audiences to root for. The animals are essential to the movie's plot and it being effective, and the handlers and makers clearly and painstakingly got the right performances from them to convey the right amount of action, personality, and emotion in key scenes, such as getting the eagle to actually land on Dar's arm, or the ferrets mischievously stealing various items throughout the movie, or the tiger running and viciously attacking the enemy. Perhaps most remarkably is that the animals used in the movie are real. There is no CGI at any point in place of the animals, which certainly wouldn't be the case today, at least in some scenes, but the movie is better for using an actual tiger, eagle, ferrets, and bear, giving it a greater sense of authenticity and realism. Effective villains are as important as the protagonist in any fantasy movie, and the Beastmaster definitely delivers in the villain department. Mayax is both wicked and a near over-the-top cartoonish high priest with an overlong hooked nose, rotten teeth, and pigtails with skull ties at the bottom. His primary character traits involve being nothing more than a maniacal, heartless ruler and killer. The priests he commands likewise look crazed and maniacal, sporting bald heads and matching maroon-colored robes and hoods. Meanwhile, Mayax's witches are all tall with Amazonian-like bodies and contrasting grotesque faces, and his death guards, who are made to be mindless savages with the insertion of leeches into the ears, likewise have muscular bodies contrasted with masks that resemble some type of demon with glowing green eyes. There is also Mayax's large army of Juns and their leader, who appear to be human, but with perhaps some cross of beast or monster with their inhuman grunts and growls during battle, while simultaneously armed in helmets, with the leaders having a distinctly memorable bat-like aesthetic. For a fantastical sword and sorcery epic, a sweeping landscape and set pieces are essential, and the ones used and shown in the film create a world that seems vast and diverse. 
whether it's the various villages such as Dar's Emerai village or the village surrounding Mayax's temple, the abode of the bird-worshipping fearful cannibals who eventually helped Dar take down the Jun Horde, or the extensive valleys in which Dar travels with his animal companions, including the lofty rock formation on which he kisses Kiri at the end of the movie. Perhaps just as memorable as the characters and screen visuals is the score. Dare it be said, but the score composed by Lee Holdridge compares equally as well, if not better, to the overwhelming majority of fantasy and action-adventure movies. It's composed in a way to make the movie feel even bigger than it actually is, as well as perfectly accentuating and helping to capture the scope of the epic, enhancing various action scenes and character moments, both in dramatic ways and tender ones. To great effect, the Beastmaster combines relatable and definable characterizations of heroes and villains, which include animals, along with action, adventure, and fantastical elements, to create an otherworldly place and time, complete with sweeping cinematography. The Beastmaster is a creative, if not underappreciated film that is rightly beloved by a generation of 80s kids and adults alike.